Hello, in this video we're going to see how to create a facial annotation for our neutral mesh. The facial annotation will be used in the further processing steps and provides info on where the lip and eyelid contours are located on the base mesh. It also stores selections for different parts of the lips and mouth socket. Let's start by loading a daily scan. Let me drag and drop the file here. Let's also load a corresponding texture. Now I'm going to load the top camera. To do that I'm going to use a load camera node. Then we need to bring our neutral mesh into the camera space. To do that, let's create a load transform node. Let me load a transformation file that brings the model from the fax space into the HMC space. So here is what we have. Now let's create a facial annotation node. The first input of the node is going to be our neutral mesh in the camera space. The second input is our top camera. Then we can go to the visual editor and click the import from detection button. I'm navigating to the detection folder. Inside we need to find the detection file corresponding to a neutral expression. In the previous videos we noted that the neutral expression is located in the last frame of the sequence. Let's select the last frame and in the following dialog let's click accept. Here we have our detection result nicely projected onto the neutral mesh but we still need to add some fixes to the contours. In order to understand where we should put the contours on the mesh, we can use the texture guide. The same guide was used when wrapping the fax expressions. The texture guide comes with our base mesh. Let's go ahead and load it. I'm going to drag and drop the base mesh, and I will also load the texture guide here. Here you can see how it looks. Now we can use this texture guide to help us understand where we should place the contours. For example, we see that this contour should be located on this loop corresponding to the eyelash attachment line. Let's go ahead and fix it. For now we can do this really quickly to roughly align the contour with the guideline. The annotation has a significant impact on the processing results, so it's worth taking the time to do it correctly. Now let's return to the previous texture. This time we can repeat the adjustments more precisely. For the sake of time, let me speed up the video. Alright, the eye is done. Now we need to do the same for the right eye. Let me skip this part of the video and come back to you when everything is completed. Okay, now both contours are good and you can see that the right eye was carefully annotated. The 3D view shows the same contours projected onto the surface of the mesh. We can see that there are no artifacts and everything has been annotated carefully. Now we can move on to the lips contour. For this part, we can follow the same process. Let's start with this corner. Again, I'm going to plug in my guideline texture. Then, I start carefully adjusting the contour. It's highly recommended that during the wrapping of the neutral expression, you follow the same guidelines on the base mesh to place these loops precisely at the border of the lips. So later, when you do an annotation, you can rely on the guidelines.
All right, now that we've finished fitting the contour, we can switch back to the original texture. This time we can repeat the process more precisely. Now we can put these semantic points close to their corresponding markers. Let me speed up the video for you. Alright, looks pretty good. Let me add a few adjustments here. Okay, that looks good to me. The process is not finished yet. It's time to check this contour against the contour detected in track. If we zoom in here and go to editing mode, we can see the semantic points. Let me switch back to wrap 4D for a moment. First, I will turn off the wireframe. Now we can match our annotation to the one made in track and make a few adjustments. I can move it here This one goes a little bit lower. This one goes here. And this one goes here. Alright, this ensures that the annotations are consistent with the detections. Now we can move on to the next step. The next step is to select the polygons for different parts of the lips. Let's start with loading an open mouth expression. I'm navigating to my blend shape folder. As I recall, I have an open mouth expression on number 31. Let me bring this expression here. And here is my open mouth expression. In addition, I suggest that you use a fixed symmetry node. This will help us convert our non-symmetrical model into one that is perfectly symmetrical. This trick will greatly simplify our selection process. Next, I'm going to create a polygon selection node. And I'm going to rename it to Lips. Let's start with selecting the Lips area. I'm going to use polygroups to help me with the selection process. Let's select the Lip Outer Top polygroup, then Lip Outer Bottom. Now I'm going to hide the selection. Then, let's zoom in here and select Lip Top, Lip Bottom, Lip Inner Top, and Lip Inner Bottom. Starting from here, I'm going to use the Grow Selection tool. I will expand the selection till it's roughly at the base level of the gum. All right. Now what I can do is click Hide Selected. Then I will copy the selection node. I will rename the new node to Mouth Socket. And now I'm going to select the Mouth Socket polygons. Let me plug the selection into the last input, which is specifically reserved for the Mouth Socket. Now with the Lip Selection node, I'm going to select all the polygons. Then I click Unhide All and in Invert. This is how we get our lips selected. Let's rename the node to simply Lips. My next step will be to copy this node. Instead of clicking Ctrl V, I can use Ctrl Shift V and that will paste my node, preserving all its connections. I'm going to call it Lips Top. For Lips Top, I need to select the upper part of my lips. I'm going to exclude Lip Outer Bottom Lip Bottom, Lip Inner Bottom, and Mouth Socket Bottom. And now I have my selection just for the top part of the lips. Then I'm going to copy this node and paste it again. I'm going to call this node Lips Top Right. 
Now, let's go to the parameter panel using Ctrl P, then let's go to the camera tab. Let's change this parameter to orthographic. It will make our selection process easier. Then I can click here and deselect the entire left part of the selection holding the Ctrl key. Let's double check that the selection is good. This is my lip top selection and I'm going to plug it into the upper lip right input. Then I'm going to do the same for the left part of the lip. Using the same technique, I deselect everything from the right part. And here I have my next selection. Let's plug it in here. I'm going to do the same for the bottom part of the lips. Let me skip this part of the video and I'll come back to you in a few seconds. Alright, now I have my lower right lip selection and also my lower left lip selection and I've plugged in everything here. We can remove these nodes as we don't need them anymore. Let's also rearrange these nodes vertically. We can go to the facial annotation node and here we can see the result of our facial annotation. That looks pretty good. All that remains is to click export. Let's call the file facialannotation.json. This annotation will be used in the next steps of the processing, which we will discuss in further videos. That's it for this tutorial. Thank you and see you next time.